Hi there, I'm Nathan Herrig with Kremlin Goodwill Emergency Medical Services in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and today we want to talk about measles. Measles is a highly infectious, airborne transmitted disease. Luckily for most of us in the emergency medical services, we have experience dealing with patients who have these types of infectious diseases. Because of the rising number of cases in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Department of Health recently put out an information bulletin guiding emergency medical responders with how they should treat patients who have suspected measles. Measles is highly infectious, transmitted through the air. In fact, it's so infectious it has a 90% transmission rate in people who don't have an immunity to it. Most of us annually go through a flu season. We've all been trained on how to deal with patients who have suspected tuberculosis, so the precautions that we have already on our trucks right now are enough to protect ourselves while we're treating a patient who we suspect may have measles. Now, most of us, when we were infants, received two doses of a live measles-containing vaccine, the MMR, or measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine. However, you want to make sure when dealing with a patient who has suspected measles that only healthcare providers who have that presumed immunity, either they've received two doses of the live measles-carrying MMR vaccine or have titers that can prove they are still immune, are the ones that are approaching this patient. Even if you have this presumed immunity, you want to make sure that you're following some universal precautions when dealing with patients who have suspected measles. This includes the use of an N95 rated mask. It also means that your partner should be wearing a mask and, if possible, you should try to put a surgical mask on the patient if it's not medically contraindicated due to an airway problem. If you do not have this presumed immunity and you come in contact with a patient that you suspect has measles, the Pennsylvania Department of Health recommends that you are no longer in contact with any patients, meaning you are not returning to service as an emergency medical responder from anywhere from 5 to 21 days after that exposure. By having that mask on ourselves and our partner, and then putting a separate mask on our patient, we've maximized our chance to limit the spread of this highly infectious disease. Understand that measles has a long incubation period that can be around 10 days. After on average that 10 day incubation period, we can start to see some of the symptoms develop. These include a fever, cough, conjunctivitis, and white spots that might be inside the patient's mouth known as coptic spots. As the disease progresses, we'll start to see that classic rash that you see in all the medical textbooks that deal with measles. It starts at a patient's hairline and head and will work their way down throughout the entire body until the disease is fully covering the patient. During these period of times that the patient is symptomatic, the disease is highly infectious. So again, if you do not have that presumed immunity, do not come in contact with this patient if possible. It's important to note that measles can linger in the air for up to two hours after you transfer patient care. This means you do not want to enter the patient compartment of an ambulance until after that period of time. This also means that if you have to re-enter your patient compartment or your ambulance before that two hour period of time is over, you're going to want to continue to wear an N95 respirator mask. Thank you very much for watching our video detailing how emergency medical service responders can protect themselves, their partner, their patient, and the community from the spread of measles. Please make sure that if you do come in contact with a patient that you suspect has measles, you are notifying your receiving facility and starting any sort of process necessary to make sure you, your partner, and the community are safe from the spread of this highly infectious disease. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe out there.